Hello and welcome to Seller. Time to pause. Today we'll be joined again by Neil. We'll be unpacking the Bible verses, Matthew 8 verse 1 to 4, in our first episode of this month. We are so glad you're here with us. I will stop and breathe in your presence. Just breathe. Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 to 4. Jesus came down the mountain with the cheers of the crowd still ringing in his ears. Then a leper appeared and dropped to his knees before Jesus, praying, Master, if you want to, you can heal my body. Jesus reached out and touched him, saying, I want to be clean. There and there, all signs of the leprosy were gone. Jesus said, Don't talk about this all over town. Just quietly present your healed body to the priest, along with appropriate expressions of thanks to God. Your cleansed and grateful life, not your words, will bear witness to what I have done. I want to use two illustrations based on two Salvation Army generals to help us maybe think a little about that reading. The first general I want to talk about is William Booth, the founder of the Salvation Army. He spent many years traveling the globe spreading the gospel message through the Salvation Army, and towards the end of his life was planning again to go to a Congress to talk about the work of the Salvation Army and his plans for the future. But his health was getting worse and worse, and very soon his aides realised that he was not going to be able to go and share that word. But William Booth was still determined to have a word. And so a plan was made he would send a message to those gathered at the Congress. Come the day, the crowds gathered, ready to hear what the general had to say to them. William Booth, back in England, was quite frugal and knew that sending a message by telegram was a costly thing, paid for by the word. And so when the message was open, this was what William Booth had sent. Others. General Booth. That was all he sent, just the word others. And we're going to think about that in just a moment. The other general I want to talk about is General John Gowans. General John Gowans was a great general in many ways, but maybe best known for the wonderful poetry, the wonderful lyrics that he produced over many years. Great works of theology great works of poetry, songs that struck the deepest depths and songs that were easy to learn and sing along to. Most of us who have any knowledge of the Salvation Army will know many of the works of John Gowans. I was once at an officers meeting and it was quite dry, quite long and maybe I was quite bored. I don't know because I didn't take very much notice of what was going on. But all of a sudden, an illustration was given which has struck with me to this day. The illustration was someone asking John Gowans at one of his last public meetings what the most important words he had written were. People thought he might have come up with one of those deep theological words that he wrote. But John Gowans said the most important thing he wrote were these lines. To be like Jesus. It's a wonderful song. It does mean a great deal, but it's so simple in many ways. The words are to be like Jesus. This hope possesses me in every thought and deed. This is my aim, my creed. To be like Jesus, this hope possesses me. His spirit helping me. Like him, I'll be. And so we have two generals giving two thoughts, to be like Jesus in the service of others. And I want to go back to that Bible reading that I shared with you. The Bible reading is really about two separate people. The first is the leper, the man who came suffering in so many ways. 
We can all picture in our mind's eye how we see a leper in Bible times. A man wrapped in rags, going from town to town, ringing a bell or shouting out that he was a leper to allow people to get out of the way. Nobody was to touch him. Nobody was to come near him. In ringing that bell or shouting those words, maybe people would leave a few scraps of food by the side of the road. But no one would come in contact with him. People were frightened. Even family and friends would be totally separated from that leper. And then the leper saw Jesus. There are so many things he could have asked, so many things that he would have wanted. And yet, he did the one thing he had to do. When he saw Jesus, he fell on his knees and worshipped him. That is to be our reaction when we see Jesus, to fall on our knees and worship him. There are so many things that can come from that. There is that desire for cleansing and healing, for being made whole. But our first reaction should be to worship. Of course, the second person in the story is Jesus. And Jesus' reaction in this situation is wonderful. Jesus saw a leper come and worship him. And we know that Jesus could have healed him with a word. Jesus could have healed him with a thought and a prayer. Jesus did that on so many other occasions. But on this occasion, it's made very clear to us by Matthew. Jesus reached out and touched him. Jesus touched the untouchable. A man who even friends wouldn't touch, who even family wouldn't touch, even those who had loved him. But Jesus showed real care, real concern, real compassion and real love. The man was healed. Jesus didn't just stand at a distance and do the God thing. He gave the man the one thing that he had missed so long, the touch of human compassion. As I said, the words of General John Gowans talked about us being like Jesus. We are to reach out and touch the untouchable. I once had a DC who I met in this very office where I'm recording now. And during that meeting, he said to me that people will only see Jesus if they see Jesus in the Christians that they meet. So we are to strive to be like Jesus and use the opportunities that we are given to serve others. Have compassion for others by being like Jesus. Those two words of those generals come together in that thought. I want to share one more thing with you, just a brief prayer written by General John Gowans. He says this, this is a prayer for salvationists. You may be a salvationist, you may not, but this prayer still has a word for you. Do listen. Christ of compassion, grant the people called salvationists a fresh baptism of compassion. Make us genuine carers for the impoverished. Help your Salvation Army everywhere to recapture a passion for the poor and the determination to integrate the excluded in your name. P.S. What I pray for your army, I pray for myself. Let's go and be like Jesus in the service of others. God bless you. If you curse me, then I will bless you. If you hurt me, I will forgive. 
And if you hate me, then I will love you. I choose the Jesus way. If you're helpless, I will defend you. And if you're burdened, I'll share the weight. And if you're hopeless, then let me show you there's hope in the Jesus way. Hello, this has been Sailor Time to Pause, a podcast from Plexus Salvation Army, an online church in the UK. I'm Ian. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Sam. If you've enjoyed journeying with us over these last few weeks, join us every Monday. Or any day that works for you. To spend time together, taking time out to pause, catch our breath, draw near to God and refresh our spirits. We share Bible teachings, reflections on songs we're listening to, and on what's going on in the world around us. As well as this, on the last day of the month, we look back and reflect, share any thoughts from our listener community, and ask what we can take from it into our daily living. What we call our personal So What's for the month. Join us, making us part of your regular routine, spending a few minutes to listen to what God might be saying to you. Find us on your favourite podcast streaming service, 
on Facebook or YouTube by searching for Selah. That's S-E-L-A-H. Time to pause.